Hey everybody, welcome to Python Learning. As you may already know that recently on 5th of October, a new Python version got released, Python 3.9. Though it is not a major release, it got some fresh useful features and modules. And here we are going to get familiar with these features. What are these features and basically their utility? So the first and I would say the nicest feature I got to know in this version is type hinting generics or collection type hinting. Yes, there was type hinting before 3.9. For example, if I were to hint a variable that it is a list of string, I had to use the alias. If I directly say here that this is a list, this should be a list of string, and if I invoke this function, and now let's run this, we get error. Type object is not subscriptable. I cannot directly say that this name's variable should be a list holding string. Rather, I had to import list from typing. So if I import list from typing, import list and then if i use this alias list here and now if i run this i do not get any error so there was a module to do this and it is typing module we used to import list from typing and then we were using the list alias to do this now switching to 3.9 here we can directly use list instead of list alias from typing so here if I say this names should be a list holding string items then when I run this I don't get any error. We no longer need to import anything. We actually have type hinting generics to directly use with any kind of collection. Now if I change this list holding string values to hold let's say int values See, it warns me about the wrong type inserted here. Expected list string got list in instead. So this is how it works. It hints about the inappropriate type used. Next update is two new methods got introduced in string class. Now we can directly remove anything from the start and from the end of a string. So here, if I want to remove this prefix hello, so for that, I'll say val dot remove prefix. And here, I'll say remove hello. And now let's print the resulting string. So hello got removed. Now let's say you're having a file name, let's say abc dot txt and here if you want to remove the suffix print val dot remove suffix and here if I want to remove this txt run this see now it's abc moving to the next one merging and updating a dictionary to merge two dictionaries or to update a dictionary onto some other dictionary, we have function update. But this version came up with something even more simpler than that. We now have easy to use merge operator and update operator. So here, if I want to merge these two dictionaries, A and B, then I can use the merge operator. This will give me another dictionary, C. Let's print this resulting dictionary. And let's run this. So here is the di resulting dictionary where we have all the items from A and then we're updating A with B and we're getting the result as new dictionary in C. Here you can see that one is having value A and here in B one is having value B. So in the updated dictionary in C we are having one updated with value B. And these are all the other values from A and B. Now let's talk about merge and place. 
if I don't want this new variable to hold my resulting dictionary or say if I want to merge all these value from B into A then I can say merge and update in place this is update operator which performs the merge in place so it will update A by merging all the items from B into A so let's print A print A so this is the result all the items from B into A we can also use update operator on a dictionary with iterable objects but condition is it should contain two items one for key and one for value so if I have this B and let's comment these two lines because it won't work with merge operator so let's comment these lines And on this so it works with update operator now next one is printing the file name along with the path before 3.9 special variable file was used only to get the name of the file if I run this line of code it prints my path is main.py it just prints the name of the file now coming here on 3.9 running this line this is gonna print the complete path so it prints the file name along with the path of that file now comes the new modules that got added in 3.9 first is zone info module before 3.9 we were dependent on PyTZ module for time zones now it is native to Python in 3.9 we can directly use it in Mac OS and Linux, but in Windows, there is a dependency called TZ data module so that it can know what time zone mean. So you can install it in Windows saying, let me write it here, PIP install TZ data. Okay. Now see here, here we are invoking date time function. Let's import it from date time and import date time okay so now here we are passing in the GMT standard time if we pass the zone or region here for example if I pass America Los Angeles here and here if I am going to use the zone info then I need to import it so import zone info import zone info now when I run this I get the time for this region America is seven hours ahead so it prints PDD next new module that we have in 3.9 is graphlib we can perform topological sorting on a graph using this module if you don't know about topological sort then let me explain this Suppose you're running several tasks and these tasks are dependent on each other. For example, see here in this graph, D is directed towards B and D is also directed towards C. So before starting the task B, D must be completed because B has a dependency on D. And same is true with C. To start the task C, D must be completed first. Now here, after A completes, we can start the task C. Again here, after A completes, we can start the task B. Now what topological sort is going to do? It is going to convert this graph into linear ordering of these tasks or nodes. See here, A is not dependent on any task or any node. So in linear ordering, A is going to come first. Now task C and B can be performed. So this way we find out the linear ordering of tasks to be performed one after the other. And this is topological sort, which now we can perform using this module. So here we are passing in this graph in this topological sorter. Let's import it. We need to import graphlib. Import graphlib. And here 
we're going to import topological sorter graph lib import topological sorter and here we can invoke the static order method ts dot static order to get the linear ordering it returns an iterable so let's get it in a container now let's print it let's run this so this is the linear order of all the tasks next and the last update is in math module we now have LCM method which accepts multiple arguments and returns least common multiple for those arguments. We also got a new GCD method. GCD used to accept only two arguments before 3.9, but now we can pass in multiple arguments and get the greatest common divisor for them. And there are two more methods which got added to math module, but these are rarely used. These are math dot next after it returns the next floating point after the value x towards y and math dot ulp unit in the last place it returns the value of the least significant bit of a float so these were all the updates that came with 3.9 if you like this video then like this video and subscribe to our channel to keep yourself updated